Hi there, and welcome to Andy Robinson RC, and cheers for checking out the channel today. And on today's episode, as you can see, we have these three wonderful models here, but we will be concentrating on this one here, which is a 1995 Tamiya M01 Mini Monte Carlo Rally bodied M chassis, uh, which has never been used. So uh, you'll be looking at this today. Okay, now before we dig into this, just uh, thought I'd uh, show you these as well. We've got this coming very soon. And uh, yeah, this is always massive. <laughs> Huge thing, watch me struggle. All right, so yeah, as you say, it's a Collod Buster. Okay, and this is an original Chevy um, badged Bowtie Grill Collod Buster. So it's a first generation one and it's original. So uh, that will be coming um, very soon with a, a video about that. Now I'm hoping to do, actually it's gonna be a video recreating my uh, my childhood. If you remember the video I did on the um, the Teo a Nissan 4x4 King Cab lookalike, um, I'll be doing a video with that and this. So uh, yeah, if you haven't already and you wanna see that, uh, please do consider subscribing. Right, so we've got that coming up. So I'm going to move this huge thing down here. This just isn't the room. And also, we have this rather nice looking Subaru Brat. Now, I got this uh, at the weekend, just gone uh, from a chap. I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning his name, called Mark. And uh, he lives not too far from me. And uh, we got talking. Said he had a couple of Tamiyas, would I be interested? And um, he uh, gave me for the channel at a very reasonable price. So um, we'll have a look at this one on a future video. I say I've not had a brat yet on the channel. But this is a re-release. But to me, there's something about it and it just looks really like a vintage one. But I love the colour. But we'll, uh, we'll get into that in the video uh, when I do a video on it. Okay, so we'll put that out of the way as well, but I just thought that you know what's coming up soon. Right, okay then. So, the M01 Mini. Oh, that's so much better, it's so much lighter. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Now, uh, this one I got recently off um, Marketplace on Facebook, and I couldn't believe it because these are getting really expensive now to find a good clean M01 and uh, I'll tell you what I paid for it, I paid £170 and it didn't come with a box or it's manual or anything but the car just came built up with its original radio gear and uh, as I say it was it's never been used I mean it, it's absolutely spotless underneath so it's fantastic absolutely stoked to get this now um just recently I, I wanted to try and acquire cars in my collection that have been important or mean something more than just another radio controlled car in the collection. I wanted to go back and thought, well, this had a big, big impact on my, uh, I say, RC car career, if you want to term it like that. And the M01, now, although it would be in a Tamiya, I raced this at my high school club. And this is the mini, uh, the, the car that I really got heavily into sort of modifying and tuning to race. And, uh, you know, got really seriously more into the racing side of things. So, um, or serious for me at the time. Uh, so, yeah, this Mini holds a big, uh, special uh, place in my RC heart. Um, so, I thought I'd, I'd look out for an M01, um, as I sold mine years and years ago. And um, I'd love to uh, get another. And I found one. Now, the Mini I got originally... I got the one uh, that was released at the end of 1994, about the 7th of December, and that was the Rover Mini Cooper. So exactly the same, but it just had the, the green, like a British racing green with a white roof, and it was like in road road track, uh, road spec, sorry. Um, so that was the one I bought. Uh, I never bought the, the Monte Carlo one. But when I was looking for them, I knew it was going to be down to um, condition more than anything. So when this one popped up at that price, uh, I couldn't say no to it. Now, 
it's a nice looking thing it's probably much better than i could have done if i'd been doing it up with all the stickers and everything my pet hate um only slight gripes on this which i'll rectify is the wheel arches need a, a bit of a trim up but uh, i'm sure i can convince uh, my wife to give it a bit of a trim for me and i don't know if you can see it just here here and here there's a little paint bleed uh, a little bit of paint bleed where you can see red uh, um where the white roof is uh, so yeah not not 100 perfect but as i say i probably couldn't have done any better myself and um, there's a couple of stickers i've had to re-stick down but you know i mean the car now it is it's getting on for almost 30 years old you know so it was about 26 27 years old now so you can't really complain too much about that we'll whip the body off and i'll just give you a quick look underneath the body shell but yeah uh so pleased with it and then i'm going to show you some other things in a minute to do with this and from back when i was racing now when i was racing my mini i didn't want a racing green rover mini cooper i wanted a neon yellow mini cooper as you do now if you look at this picture here if you can see it on camera that is the mini that i used to race back in the day and i'll go into a bit more detail with that later on right that's if you're still with me <laughs> okay so here it is absolutely completely utterly bog standard no bearings no nothing no frills at all it's just completely kit built and it even has exactly the same radio system i had in mine as well so it's absolutely the same um uh, minus the body shell but it's in superb condition i cannot believe i managed to pick one up at that price um unused so i am super super happy with that i did trim the body post a little bit further down with those uh, i must have did that just to um and alter the stamp slightly it sat a bit too high at the front but other than that i said i really haven't done anything to it and i blew some dust off it with me uh blower and uh, that is it but it is superb so i am super happy with that so uh before i talk about the mini i used to race plans for this well in a in an ideal world i'd like to recreate the mini that i used to race so I'm not bothered about finding a, maybe going to find an original MO1 mini body shell. That'll be too expensive, I think. Um, but ju just to get another mini body that's a decent one and I'll spray it up maybe in the uh, fluorescent yellow colour I used to uh, race mine in. And then I've obviously still got this gorgeous uh, rally body as well. Um, and also to try and find some of the optional parts I put on my m one Mini back in the day. Now, if you do find them, they tend to be mega dear because they, they just don't seem to come up that often. So, well, they do come up now and again, but I, I had seen some, but I hadn't bothered to buy any because I hadn't found a decent enough Mini. And I wasn't even sure if I was going to find one, so I didn't buy them at the time. But, I mean, the first thing we'll be doing is getting the floor race. <laughs> that is the next thing we'll be doing. Anyway, I shall just leave my uh, rather nice Mini there. Right, so what I did want to show you was, when I used to race, or when I first started racing, it was back at my high school club, so we're looking, well, I raced from the start of the club from about 1994, 95 until I left high school in uh, 98. Now, when I had used other cars, I did have uh, a Mardave Mini, which I raced a little bit without much success, and... Um, then I switched to the Tamiya FF um, chassis, the FF01 chassis, which is, again, a front-wheel drive touring car, and I had a Ford Mondeo slash Volvo 850. Uh, but then, sadly, that got run over by me playing outside. It, it rolled down a, um, a driveway and into the road, and the car squished it. The car still worked afterwards. The body shell was absolutely trashed and knackered, but uh, it became unreliable, so... Um, when it came to my, my birthday, it had to be a Mini, because I had a thing for Minis at the time as well. I was well into Minis, um, so it had to be a Mini, and I saw that and thought, yeah, I'm having one of them. Right, okay, so I'll show you this first. 
Now, when I did my work experience, I, I was hoping to get into, uh, you know, some form of graphic design um, work in the industry you know, later on in my career. And I went to work, and uh, my work experience was done at Norcross uh, War, uh, War Pensions um, Division, and they had like an in-house graphic design team. Now, I, they were very good to me. I learned a lot. And um, I did the odd bit of work to help them with what they were doing, but they basically gave me free reign of what I could do. And I used that time there to help build my portfolio for my GCSE art. Anyway, one of the projects I did was to turn Race Car Magazine into like my own front, uh, front cover that I designed and I featured, if you can see it there for Lights Not Shining, my my original race m01 on it so i thought it was pretty cool and it changed all the headings and everything as well so i mean i did this according to this i did this in march 97 so i would have been in about year 10 at high school then right anyway i won't go through the whole mag but i do want to show you um this so I'm sure some of you or will have heard or will have raced maybe or at least remember it from reading the race car mags about the Tamiya Euro Cup where they used to race the touring cars, the Formula One cars and the uh, the minis. I think they raced uh, M M01s and M02s so you'd have like the Fiat Baths and the Mini Coopers at the time. Anyway, so I did an article and to try and match in with the Tamiya Euro Cup uh, right up and so there it is that's the one i did back then and it's just about my mini and how i tuned it and what i did and, and how i raced it at the club i raced at now if i can find it there is actually a genuine euro cup article in here the magazine's a bit old now so you'll have to bear with me so you can find it but some ace ads in here look at that tent technology touring car Right, Let's see if we can find it. I'm sorry, um, I did have it all worked out earlier. <laughs> Where's it gone? I'm sure it's in there still. Ah, uh, damn it all! Right, I can't find the page I want now, which is really annoying. But I'll show you this one. It'll give you the idea. That I'm trying to. Uh, there you go. So, yeah, Tommy uh, Euro Cup, and that was the touring cars. But there was another page with the minis in, and I matched my my uh, spread to that. So that was good. I remember doing that, and so that I'm glad I kept this because it, it sort of brings back fond memories of the mini and uh, what I was doing at the time. Now, here. Also as well, a bit geeky, I know, and maybe a bit sad, but I've got all the newsletters from my RC club at high school, which is ace. And we called the newsletter Out of Control, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best name for it. But there you go. So it's got all the points, scores and everything on there. It was there. Uh, fantastic stuff. Now this is cool. I'm going to cough now, I'm really sorry. <coughs> oh dear. Oh dear, I'm just going to grab a bit of a drink. Now, I found this, I was looking through this last night before doing the video, or getting ready to do the video. And what I found was a setup sheet that I'd done for the mini that I raced. And I think I, I put down what motor I was using. Speed control, battery cells, receiver, servo, you know. And back then, I probably knew, I thought I probably knew what I was doing. But um, um, I've obviously improved my knowledge since then. And I'm always still learning now. Uh, there's lots of stuff I'm still learning. But back then, I only had what I could go off. I used to read the car magazines and race with the people at school. So you only learned from those sort of things then. I wasn't going to uh, bigger clubs back then. Anyway, so, it says uh, Tammy M01, Mini, Chassis, Driver, A. Robinson, Track, Millfield um, School. 
and I've got the springs that I used in the front. So I had the the, the short um, touring car spring set on this. It's a mono shock front and rear, and I had the the red soft spring on the back uh, with um, yeah the red soft spring on the rear with uh, with no spacer oddly. Um, I don't know why. And then on the front, I had the hard blue spring with a four mil spacer in it. And out the three gearing options, I had the, there was the 16 tooth, 18 tooth and 20 tooth. And I had the, the biggest 20 tooth pinion on. Tires, to be honest, I was just running on kit tires, which were the S-grip tires that came with it. I don't know if you can see it too well, but it's, uh, it, it, it's all here. And I've, I've highlighted what I was, ringed what I was using. Um, so yeah, pinion I was using uh, 20 tooth and tyres, S grips, front and rear. Now the motor, a Yokomo Pro Stock 12 turn single. Now, I'm pretty sure I used a fair different few turns of that motor. I'm sure I had a 17 and a 19 turn Pro Stock, but obviously I've got down here a 12 turn. Now I'd love to find another Yokomo Pro Stock to put back in this. Mtronics 250 ESC, which was like a biggish, no, it's big now, but a, bl a big bluish Mtronics um, 250 Speedo with black heat sinks on. Uh, Sanyo 1900 cells. They were they they seemed so big back in the day, like so powerful and punchy. These Sanyo 1900 cells I bought. I even had a couple of the the gold 1700. I think they're SC or SRC Tamiya packs as well. But yeah, Acoms 27 megahertz radio and a, an, a, a Futaba S3003 servo. So uh, it's great looking over that. And uh, and it's uh, and I even wrote down like a drove a driver profile for me as well, and um, I put down what what posi position I finished in a league. Now we didn't like, we didn't do racing like uh, you no know, like like what we do now or what you do if you went to a club. We had we did have things like the A class, B class, and C class and down, which you have like finals like that. Now you have A, B, C, D final etc. But we have classes. And uh, you basically, uh, over the season, you work your way up into um, whatever class your ability matched. And um, and then you acquired all your points for racing. And at the end of the season, uh, the racing season, or the racing calendar, um, you'd get a trophy for where you finished. Now, I did mean to put it on the uh, the table ready, but I'll just nip and get it. Because this was the, uh, the, first, the first trophy I ever won uh, RC racing. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Prepared as usual. I should have had this on the table. But there it is. That was the first trophy I ever uh, won with my RC cars. And it was won with the Tamiya M01 Mini. I came third in class overall for that season. It says, yeah, Andy Robinson, third A class. So at the time, I was so made up of winning that. <laughs> uh, and then that was the, the first trophy I'd ever won. And it was like years after then before I started winning anything else again when I got into uh, racing again years later. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's just ace to have all this stuff. And oh, it was brand I'm not going to show you all because a lot of it's tiny, right, and you can't see it. But just to have it all from back in the day. I mean, it even progressed that much that I even I went on after this. I got a Yokomo uh, YR4 touring car. And at the time, it was so good. Uh, it, it was beating uh, all sorts. Uh, it was fantastic. But yeah, um, anyway, I won't bore you to death with the rest of that. But I just wanted to show you a few things uh, that I had. Massive nostalgia trip. And that's why I wanted the Tamiya Mini. Because it was sort of like a massive, important part in my sort of my RC sort of history. So, um, and, and that's sort of a little bit of a direction I'm taking with my collection at the moment. Trying to get thing cars that that meant something besides cars that I like to race and things like that. But that was one of them, the Tamiya M01 M chassis, um, and the Monte Carlo one was from uh, October 1995, and the Rover Mini was from 1994, 7th of December. 
But uh, yeah, so there you go. We're going to be getting this running in a video soon. And I'm actually, I did, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I'm going to do a head to head. I was going to get my MFX01 uh, Escort Mark II rally out, and I've got the M05 RA Citroen 2 CV. So I thought, having got this as well, let's uh, let's do a head to head with all three of them in the same video. And I think that'd be uh, rather cool. So if you want to see that as well later on when it gets done, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss it. Uh, also, as well, uh, please uh, come find us on Instagram and on Facebook under Andy Robinson RC. Uh, you'll find us there. And, uh, yeah, all good stuff. Right. Uh, oh, um, actually, I do need to... I don't want to type that. Uh, I do need to mention something uh, super, super important as well. Now, um, I'm sure you've uh, heard me mention it before, but I'm a big advocate of uh, promoting mental health. And... Um, <clears throat> Just recently, I found an excellent group on uh, Facebook, and um, it's RC MHAP. Um, so go find it on Facebook. It's a fantastic group full of great people that offer a lot of support for people struggling with mental health. It basically stands for RC Mental Health Appreciation Project. Now, I will put the link into uh, the, com uh, the, the, the description in this video if you want to check it out as well. But um, if you do struggle with mental health, then it's a group well worth checking out and I highly recommend it. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I'll probably mention it again on some more videos just so um, we're getting the word out there. But, yeah, so it's RC MHAP. Sorry, I always forget the way the letters go around. But, yeah, please do check it out. Right, I'm going to go for now. We'll see you all soon on another video. Look after yourselves and take care. We'll see you later. Bye.